man's age-old quest for eternal youth and celebrity is the thirst of the mortal for immortality. Tireless effort and ceaseless thought, innumerable sciences and infinite philosophies have all revolved around this priceless pursuit across vast spectrums of space and time. The great seers of ancient India gifted the world with two majestic legacies that proved new pathways in the art of healing and rejuvenating the body, Ayurveda and Yoga. Ayurveda, the science of life and longevity, defines the harmonious blending of the individual body, mind and spirit with that of the cosmos. As per the Hindu mythology, Brahma, the cosmic creator, composed Ayurveda in a hundred thousand verses and gifted it to mankind. Thus, this ancient system of therapy, as old as a civilization which treasured it and which it nurtured, continues to flourish in the land south of the Himalayas. The principles of Ayurvedic pharmacology are fundamentally different from that of other systems of medicine, especially the allopathic system of medicine. The vast majority of Ayurvedic medicines are prepared from various herbs. Leaves and flowers are squeezed to obtain their juice. Roots and seeds are crushed and boiled with water to get their essence. To make a decoction, the extracts of plants may again be boiled with other vital ingredients. In other words, Ayurvedic medicines are often prepared under the supervision of an expert physician using classical herbal prescription. Unlike other medicinal systems, the pharmacological process closely resembles the culinary art. This natural system of medicine with a singular pharmacology entails the practice of various unique therapies. Oil therapy is one such example par excellence. It is the application of medicated oil, either internally or externally. It includes pouring of medicated oil on the crown, chest or on the back in a tank of dough. Local application of medicated paste in certain inflammatory conditions is also a common method. Swedhanam or therapeutic sweating is an unparalleled Ayurvedic treatment. Different methods are adopted for application of warm medicated oil on the body. The oil is either poured directly or by squeezing a piece of cloth dipped in it. Sometimes it is applied through a poultice called kiri filled with bolus of cooked rice leaves or medicated powder. To liquefy the toxins in the body, internal and external oleation is necessary. During treatment, the patient is made to lie on a droni.
Droni is a special wooden bed shaped to the contour of the human body. The surface of the bed is not flat but slightly convex. There is an oil outlet near the headrest. At the bottom there is a spout through which oil can be collected in a receptacle placed below. Earthen, brass and bronze vessels are used for filling aids. From time immemorial, human beings have been searching for an elixir or amrit, the magical potion to stay young and healthy forever. To fortify the system against diseases and aging, Ayurveda recommends the Panchakarma or the Five Actions, a set of rejuvenation therapies designed to purify the body of toxins. Diseases are primarily caused by the presence of amam or toxins in the system. These are usually micromolecules of improperly digested food which gets absorbed by the body. The elimination of toxins is done through panchakarma or five therapies, namely nasyam, nasal therapy, vamanam, drug-induced vomiting, virechanam, purging, vasti, therapeutic anema, and Ratta Mokshana bloodletting. Each of this pentad of action is carried out in three stages the Purva Karma preparatory procedure, Pradhana Karma the main course of treatment, and Paschat Karma post treatment care. Now let us have a look at the various Purva Karma and Pancha Karma therapies. Snehapana is internal oleation or the oral administration of medicated ghee. A prerequisite in all the Panchakarma therapies. This is the first step in the Purva Karma or preparatory procedures. Abhyanga means anointing. In Abhyanga Snana, medicated oil is massaged all over the body. The Abhyanga that is part of the daily routine lasts for 5 to 15 minutes whereas that which is performed for treating diseases may take about 45 minutes. Massages in Abhyanga can be effectively done with two therapists working on either side of the patient who lies on the droni. Special care is to be taken for Pada Abhyanga or foot massage. The marmas or vital points on the soles of the feet are closely related with certain internal organs. The soles of the right feet are massaged in clockwise movement and the left feet in anti-clockwise. The patient reclines in seven standard positions 
during this process. This begins with the person seated in an upright position. Lying supine or flat on the back is the next. Then, the body is turned to one side. Supine again. Then turning to the other side. Supine once again. And finally sitting as in the beginning. Sometimes the position of lying face down is also adopted. Many are the benefits of Abhyanga. Besides strengthening the muscles and blood vessels, it increases the flow of oxygen to the tissues and improves circulation. Massage with medicated oils gives a luster to the skin. Regular massage removes stiffness from the joints and helps graceful body movements. Medicated paste applied on the crown or forehead is called thalam. Different kinds of thalams are prescribed according to the nature of the illness. Treatments like Pirichal, Navarakiri and Sarvangadhara are preceded by the thalam.
covering of the head with medicinal paste is known as talapodichil. It is an important treatment for many minor and major diseases that afflict the head. The hair on the head should be completely shaven or cut short. The paste is applied on the crown to a thickness of 3 cm. After a prescribed time, the paste is removed and a fresh coating applied. The duration of the treatment is specified by the physician. Shirovasti is one of the major external oil therapies for vada related ailments of the head. A leather cap open at both ends is worn on the head. The prescribed oil is then warmed, poured into the cap and allowed to stand for a specified time. The duration of the treatment varies from 5 to 50 minutes in accordance with the seriousness of the illness. Pichu is a palliative treatment for ailments of the head. A long piece of cloth folded thickly and broader than the forehead is fixed around the head just above the ear level. A hole nearly one and a half inches wide is made in the front of the band. After preparatory procedures like an oil massage, the prescribed oil is applied on the head. A piece of cotton wad drenched in medicated oil is placed in the hole and allowed to remain there for some time. This process is repeated for a specific duration. Pichu is considered effective for diseases of the cranial nerves arising from vada disorder. Treating the eyes by applying medicated oil is known as Akshitarpana. The patient is made to lie on his or her back on the droni and a tank of flour paste is made around the eyes. Medicated ghee is then poured gently into the tank over the patient's closed eyes. After sufficient unction has been poured, the patient is made to open and close eyes intermittently for a period not exceeding 5 minutes. The duration is determined in accordance with the nature of the problem. After the completion of the treatment, the patient is not allowed to expose his or her eyes to strong light for some time. Extracts of certain herbs in a small stream over the eyes is Netradhara. Normally, the funnel used for Netradhara is made for the purpose with leaves of jack tree. The Swarasam or herbal extract is made to fall in a stream over the eyes with the funnel. Karnapurana literally means filling the ears. The patient is made to lie on one side. The earlobes are gently massaged with oil as in Purvakarma. Lukewarm purified medicated oil is gently poured into one ear. After remaining in the same position for about 5 minutes, the patient is turned and the process is repeated in the other ear.
Udvartana means to elevate or to promote. The name can be attributed either to the treatment's ability to improve the body condition or to the upward strokes used in massage here unlike in other Ayurvedic treatments. The oil massage cures many kinds of nervous disorders and the dry one is effective for treating obesity, rheumatoid arthritis and various kapha disorders. Udvartana done in the seven positions for a specific period considerably reduces excess fat accumulated in the body mostly in the subcutaneous tissues. This therapy effectively reduces the fat collected around the abdomen and in the inner thighs of women due to nutritional disorders. Kadi is middle part of the body. In Kadi Vasti, a tank is made on the lower back of the patient with black gram paste. Medicated oil is poured into it and allowed to remain for some time. Then it is slowly removed. Karivasti is a very effective treatment for lower backache. Urovasti is administered on the urus or the chest for treating pain in the sternum. Like in Karivasti, a small tank of black cram paste is made on the chest. Oil is poured into it and allowed to remain there for some time. Lepana is the external application of medicated paste on the body where pain associated with inflammatory condition persists. 
The ingredients of the paste vary according to the nature of the ailment. Navarakiri, Kerala's unique contribution to Ayurveda, is a fermentation of the body with bolus of cooked rice. Shashtika or Navara is a particular kind of rice known for its nutritional value. The rice is first cooked with milk and herbal decoction made of kurumthotti. Four boluses are made of the cooked rice and are tied up in linen bags. The fermentation begins with the patient sitting straight on the drone with legs stretched. The masseurs on either side perform the fermentation process in an identical manner. The movement of the hands during both fermentation and massage should always be downwards. The fermentation continues with the patient on his or her back on the drone. There is also another attendant who supplies new kiris which are kept ready in warm milk decoction. It is very important to keep the kiris at a constant temperature. The treatment is over once fermentation has been carried out in all the seven standard positions. In some cases, one of the three supine positions may be avoided and the patient is made to lie face down. After the specified duration of treatment, the paste is wiped off with palm leaf scrapers. Suitable oil is applied all over the body before dusk. Podikiri is a therapy in which the body of the patient is fermented with linen bags containing a mixture of horse gram, black gram, gingerly seeds and other vital ingredients in powdered form. The fermentation is performed in the same way as in Navarakiri. The patient is seated on the drone with legs stretched when the fermentation begins. It is important that the kiri or linen bags should retain a constant temperature during the treatment. The seated position of the patient is followed by all other usual positions.
Podikiri is effective for diseases arising from disruptive Vada and Pitta doshas. After fermentation, the patient's body may be wiped clean with a towel. Patram or Ila means leaves of plants. Patrasweda is a sudation treatment with herbal leaves. The procedure involves fermentation of the affected region using a fist-sized bundle of linen filled with finely chopped herbal leaves warmed in medicated oil. The poultice also contains sliced lime, cumin seeds and scraped coconut in addition to herbs. The whole body is fermented in the usual seven standard positions. Dhara is the treatment in which medicated liquid is poured over the patient's body. In Shirodhara, oil is poured on the forehead of the patient in a small stream with the help of special devices. After the preparatory application of oil on the head and the upper part of the body, the patient is made to lie on his or her back on the droni with the vessel for dhara hung 6 to 8 inches above the forehead. The warm oil from the vessel is then let out in a continual flow through a spout made of thread at the bottom. The flow of oil should be almost incessant for a specific period. A headband varti is tied around the forehead just above the eyebrows to protect the eyes and to direct its flow straight down through the temples. Takradhara is dhara with buttermilk. Here, herbal decoctions are mixed with buttermilk to get a new medicinal preparation. Herbs used in the decoction vary according to the disease conditions. In a 7-day treatment, the patient will be subjected to dhara only 3 to 4 times for about 20 to 40 minutes. The soothing effect of shirodhara on the central nervous system 
alleviates stress and calms the mind, which in turn improves the power of comprehension and memory. Recent researches also show that this therapy induces vasodilation within the brain, enabling increased flow of oxygen to the brain, nourishing the nervous system. As the toxins have been trapped deep in the tissues and various channels of the body, it is not conducive to the well-being of the system to expel them at one go. This is why an elaborate process of detoxification is necessary. The Purva Karma therapies help loosen up the toxins prior to the main course of treatment. Sarvanga Dhara is Dhara over the whole body. When the liquid used for dhara is milk, it is termed shiradhara. Usually cow's milk is used for this treatment, though sometimes buffalo's milk is also made use of. In both cases, herbal decoctions are also added with fresh milk. At least two well-trained attendants are necessary to carry out this treatment effectively. The treatment is carried out in all seven standard positions. Shiradhara is recommended for diseases caused due to disrupted vada humor. The process of pouring oil on the whole body with simultaneous massaging is called Snehadhara. It is of two types, Dhara over the whole body except the head and Dhara over the whole body including the head. For a really effective Sarvangadhara, at least five people are needed to attend to the patient but nowadays Usually, only two people perform this therapy. Before starting the therapy, oil should be applied on the head of the patient. The patient is then made to lie on a droni and two attendants each stand on either side. Nozzled mud or bronze pitchers, kindies, are used for pouring the oil, which should be kept warm throughout the course of the treatment. While the attendants pour oil with their right hand, they also massage the patient using their left hand. Dhanyamnadhara literally means a dhara or pouring of a medicinal liquid called dhanyamlam over the patient's body. Dhanyamlam is a sort of vinegar obtained from the preparation of various cereals, citrus fruits 
horse gram and dried ginger. Cereals with highly nutritious starch content like navra rice or millet are used. The dhaniyam lam is poured in a small stream over the patient's body from a nozzled pitcher, kindi. Diseases caused by the derangement of vata humor are treated with dhaniyamla. Pirichil, which literally means squeezing, is a unique contribution of the Kerala tradition of Ayurveda. Here, warm medicated oil is squeezed over the patient's body from a piece of cloth that is periodically dipped in a vessel containing the unction or kurumba. The unction used here is slightly more viscous than that used in Sarvangadhara. Attendants under the supervision of a physician perform the treatment. The attendants squeeze the oil with their right hand and simultaneously massage with their left hand in downward strokes. The patient should be made to adopt the seven standard positions so that no area of the body is left uncovered. Though it is actually a process of sudation used as a purvakarma preparatory treatment, it has also proved to be highly effective on its own for treating diseases caused due to the vitiation of the vata humor, especially pakshaghata, hemiplegia, paralysis, muscle spasms and other degenerative diseases affecting muscles. Upanaha Swedam or poultice is the local application of medicated paste to cure pain and swelling. Herbs, seeds, grains mixed with vinegar, buttermilk, medicated oils or ghee are ground to obtain a paste. This paste is applied hot over the affected part of the body and is allowed to remain there for over 12 hours. Avagaha Swedam is yet another form of sudation. In ailments like hernia, painful urination, rheumatism and certain other diseases due to deranged vata humor, Avagaha Swedam is recommended. In this treatment, the patient is made to sweat while sitting in a tub full of warm medicated liquid. The level of the liquid filled in the tub is up to one's navel and sometimes up to the neck. Vashpa means steam. It is also a sweat therapy. 
here, herbal steam is evenly applied to the entire body. Before starting therapy, the person is given cool liquids to avoid dehydration. Then she or he is made to lie down in a steam box on his or her back and the entire body except the head exposed to the steam. It is important to maintain the normal temperature of the head. The principles of Panchakarma were first formulated by the great scholar saints of yore, Sushruta and Charaka. Though they propounded to different schools, their disciples codified their prescriptions and thus evolved a common five-fold therapy of the Panchakarma. They include Nasya, nasal therapy, Vamana, emesis therapy, Virechana, purgation therapy, Vasti, therapeutic anima, and Raktamokshana, bloodletting. The Purva Karma usually takes one or two weeks after which the toxins which have been brought to the gastrointestinal tract are easily expelled in the Pradhana Karma. The application of medical oils or powders to the nostrils is called Nasya. According to Vagbhara, nostrils are the doorways to the Shiras, brain. As a preparatory process, the forehead and the neck region of the patient is gently massaged with suitable oil for sweating. Thereafter, the patient is made to lie down on his back with his head slightly bent back. Warm oil is then dripped into both nostrils which the patient draws in. If the Nasya therapy has been carried out effectively, kapha related toxins will be eliminated and the region nourished. The patient feels great relief in the head and clarity of the sense organs. Breathing becomes completely unobstructed which gives sound sleep at night. Nasya is excellent for chronic sinusitis, headache, throat diseases, epilepsy, catar, migraine, voice constraint, eye diseases and cervical spondylitis. Vamana is a purificatory process intended mainly for the expulsion of vitiated kapha. This is a painless, drug-induced emetic process. Vamana cures diseases like acne, asthma, arthritis, chronic cold, diabetes and various other kapha disorders. Virechana is for the elimination of pitta related toxins. The process of cleansing is carried out in the small intestine and other pitta zones. Here, drugs that stimulate bowel movements are induced for the expulsion of doshas via the rectum. The word vasti means bladder. Traditionally, the urinary bladders of animals like cows or buffaloes were filled with medicated liquids and used for enema. Vasti's effects are directly felt in the colon, 
the prime abode of the Vata. With the application of a series of purifying and nourishing bastis, the morbid doshas and other toxins trapped for long in the tissues are eliminated. This restores the equilibrium of the humors. According to Shushruta, certain diseases are caused by vitiation of blood. So he suggested letting out the vitiated blood. Bloodletting was mostly carried out with the help of precise surgical instruments or by leaching. Today, this age-old therapy has proved to be a wonder to modern science. In the age of ultra-modern drugs and medical equipments, here is a timeless system of medicine which seeks to soothe the body and soul to regain the lost grace and harmony of man's biobalance. Each day's treatment is followed by a medicated bath using prescribed oils for the head and body. Herbal shampoo cleanses the body of oil. During the tenure of treatment, a strict vegetarian diet is called for, usually based on the prescriptions of a physician. Through aeons of time, this pristine wisdom has taught us that man's immunity rests in nature and only through its cosmic essence can he reach out to a wholesome life.